good morning students today we'll see the external features of the spinal cord so this is the spinal cord which i have taken out from the its covering that is the meningeal coverings the spinal coverings of the meninges this spinal cord it is it extends from the upper border of the c1 cervical vertebra and it ends at the lower border of the l1 vertebra so the length of the spinal cord is 45 cm we know that there are other structures in the body which are also having the length of 45 cm these are vas deferens thoracic duct then we have got the femur bone and the sartorius along with the spinal cord these all have the length of 45 cm now in this specimen we can see that the spinal cord extends over here this is the in situ position of the spinal cord how it looks like and it is covered by the meningeal layer you can see it over here that the spinal cord is there and the, you can see the dorsal nerve rootlets over here these are the dorsal nerve rootlets which are coming out from the spinal cord so the spinal cord as i have told it extends from the upper border of the c1 cervical vertebra up to the lower border of the l1 vertebra the coverings i have already told you that they are covered by the meningeal coverings and spinal cord in external features we see that at two level there are enlargement one in the region of the cervical region from where the cords of the brachial plexus comes so this is if you see the thickness over here th this area is more thicker than the area which is over here so this lies in relation to the cervical vertebra and it is known as the cervical enlargement of the spinal cord similarly in the region of the uh, lumbar region there is another enlargement what is known as lumbar enlargement if you compare the whole thickness over here in cervical region as well as in lumbar region there are two enlargement the maximum enlargement in case of cervical region is at the level of the c6 vertebra similarly in case of the lumbar region it is at the level of l1 vertebra now the lower part of the spinal cord this part it looks like a tail shaped part this is what you can see this part it is this part this much part is known as what is known as conus medullaris this part is known as conus medullaris and there is a uh, internally it is also dilated to form what is known as the terminal ventricle so from below the conus medullaris if you see there are the nerve rootlets which are coming out of it these are all the nerve rootlets which is coming out of it and this whole nerve rootlets along with this extension of the meningeal layer over here what is known as or you can say the extension of the pia mater layer which forms what is known as phylum terminale this portion this is what is known as phylum terminale so this is one of the pia mater modification and this phylum terminale is of total having a length of 20 cm the 15 cm is inside the vertebra canal while remaining 5 cm comes out from it what is known as the phylum terminale externa so total 20 cm length is there and this lower part which is like a horse tail shaped area is known as coda equina so coda means the tail and equina means is related to the horse so it looks like a horse tail and it is known as coda equina now if you see this coda equina they are formed by the lower segments and they are basically formed by the 10 pairs of nerve roots it starting from the lower four lumbar nerve roots that is l2 through l5 and then s1 to s5 and then coccygeal nerve root so total this 10 pairs of the nerve rootlets will form what is known as coda equina so if somebody asks you how the coda equina is formed it is formed by the 10 pairs of the nerve which i have described you further if you see this is how the section of the spinal cord looks like if you see this section in the center what you are able to see area is known as the gray matter of the spinal cord and this is surrounding area what you are able to see is what is known as the white matter this is the anterior horn area this is this to our and this posterior thin is what is known as the posterior horn of the spinal cord similarly if you see other external feature in the midline anteriorly this is your anterior median fissure posteriorly you have got the posterior median sulcus 
from the nerve rootlets which comes out you have got on the posterior aspect posterolateral these are the posterolateral sulcuses and here you have got the anterolateral sulcuses so these are how the fissures of the spinal cord are there this spinal cord and the nerve roots they will form what is known as the spinal segments so area of the spinal cord from where this nerve roots comes out if you see over here in situ position this area there are multiple nerve rootlets between i am showing it between this my forcep this multiple nerve rootlet will form what is known as a a single nerve what is known as the segment of a nerve so what is segment segment is the area of the spinal cord from where the particular anterior and the posterior nerve rootlets comes and they will ultimately join to what is to form what is known as the spinal nerve another thing what you are able to, what i want to show you is that as you open this dural folds between the two segments you will be able to see what is known as ligamentum denticulata this is the pial modification this area this area where it is attached in between triangular area is known as ligamentum denticulata there are 21 pairs of such ligamentum denticulata and they are between the each nerve roots of the spinal segment